I wonder what you think right now about the market overall. Is there a catalyst that you're looking for that could propel the next leg higher in stocks, or are we due for this longer period of consolidation? Oh, what a good question early in the morning, Don. How are you? Um, so, listen, uh, you know, we're in September, which is historically uh, the weakest month of the market, um, kind of coming off uh, summer and really kind of going into fall. Um, and really, again, you know, we really haven't had a correction or anything close to it in, gosh, all year, right? Even actually before, since, since last fall. And so we expected the, the ride to get much more bumpy. And, you know, in terms of where I'm seeing opportunities, um, there are kind of these like glimmers of, of, uh, of really, really strong, resilient areas in the market, some that we're really not talking about. So actually, you mentioned earlier luxury retail, right? Uh, your European um, uh, reporter on the European markets mentioned that. So that's an area that I really, really like. It's really one of the most resilient areas, uh, areas of the market right now. A name that I like is Capri Holdings. This is the company that owns Versace and Michael Kors. Um, and they're really experiencing um, some really good numbers right now. So when you look at their, their revenue, they, they reported revenue a little while ago for the second quarter. Year over year, they're up 178%. That's crazy. And we're seeing that across the board with luxury. The second category I really like is these so-called stay-at-home stocks. We've been talking about stay-at-home stocks for, the, for, for over a year, right? And these were the stocks that were supposed to underperform or not do as well. We're supposed to switch to reopen stocks when we were, re, we were in reopen mode. Well, we're in reopen mode. Um, and some of these names, which are kind of uh, adjuncts, I guess, uh, luxury, like an RH, the furniture store, very expensive furniture, very, uh, you know, luxury furniture. This name is doing really, really well. So you look at the revenue compared to last year, right? So up 39% year over year. So, when, so last year, when everyone was staying at home, buying furniture for their house, that was supposed to be its time to shine, but yet we're seeing it outperform. Um, their margins up 49%, just really, really crazy. And they've got lots of runway. Uh, another name that I like, and which I kind of put this in the luxury category, right? This really expensive, um, higher quality product is Lovesack. It's a small cap company. We know small caps are doing really, really well right now. Uh, they sell a $1,500 beanbag chair. I hear it's really, really comfortable, but it's still $1,500, right? So I kind of put that in that, in that category. Sales are up 65% year over year. So, right, so, that's, so this was people weren't supposed to be buying beanbags. Right I mean, now. I mean it's, so Tiffany, I, I wonder you've reeled off a lot of these consumer names, but but one of the big parts of the consumer narrative has been stimulus checks and government stimulus and all of this help that's been going on out there for the past year, driving consumer spending. Is there a worry that that consumer spending starts to tail off a little bit as that pandemic aid starts to end? Just look at yesterday's retail sales data. I mean, it wasn't terrible, but it shows a moderation in happening right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I think that we're talking about two different kinds of consumers. So in the pandemic, there were a lot of people that, that were out of work. There were a lot of people that were, that were really struggling, but there were a lot of people that weren't. There are people that were able to work from home, still getting the same paycheck. And we've had a lot of you know, people change jobs, start new businesses. So everyone is not in that category. And certain brands of retail were still doing very, very well. So your brands that had pricing power, right? Your, um, your really high quality uh, traditional brands that people have come to love. I'll even put Estee Lauder in that category too. It's 100% prestige or luxury beauty. So they are still buying those. And so we've seen this flight to quality uh, in terms of products for the consumer. And again, I'll throw, I'll throw another one out there. Here's a, here's a really good example. We don't talk about it in, in terms of luxury, but Lululemon, right? So Lululemon is not technically a luxury company, but it is a higher end, more expensive product. They sell leggings for 100 to $120. And we're seeing like, those, their numbers killed it. Um, so so I, I don't see that. I, I think that we're talking about two different types of the market. So, so okay. So the luxury side of things is one side on, on the one hand, but, but then that, that, yeah. that approach that you're taking implies that the kind of middle to lower end side of things is, is then going to underperform, right? We're talking about the family dollars, the Dollar Trees, the Walmarts, perhaps some of the consumer staples type names that, are, that, are kind of, that have been a beneficiary during the pandemic. Is that the case then? Do we just focus from an investment standpoint on luxury and kind of leave everything else retail wise by the wayside? 
I think that there are a few things working in retail, and I, I don't think you can paint everything with a broad brush. Luxury is working. I do think consumer staples, for the most part, are working too, when you put like you know, Target or Walmart. Um, but when you, you also mentioned um, the, uh, the discount uh, places. So what we're seeing is, is certain uh, discount shops, right? So you've like Dollar General, uh, Dollar Tree, there, there, there are a couple of names in there. Um, it's really hard sometimes to do, to, to do really well right now if you don't have an online presence. So with, with some of those stores that are, that are located in certain areas where you know, there are um, possibly like, like food deserts or, or not a lot of other competitors, they're doing well. Um, but for, for others that don't have an online presence, um, that are in areas with competitors, they're not doing as well. So in that kind of discount area, you really kind of have to cherry pick and see and see what's working. Um, consumer staples I do like, uh, but some of them, you know, like for instance, you know, Clorox, you could kind of consider consumer staple, <laughs> um, but that's not, you know, we, we all kind of see how, how, how Clorox is doing right now. So you can't, you have to look at all of these things individually, but I, I would say broadly, um, you know, the, the luxury names, um, with, with pricing power are doing well.